Welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna be hopping on the ice with Brad Hawthorne. He's gonna catch some walleyes and share some tips that'll help you put more walleyes on the ice this upcoming ice season. And he's also gonna talk a little bit about Northland's new tungsten slim spoon. So without further ado, let's jump right in. You have to put them next to other spoons to see exactly what I'm talking about. Now before you go thinking that that's a 16th ounce spoon, it's not. This is a quarter ounce tungsten spoon. And to let that hit home, right here, there's your size difference right there. That is just absolutely crazy when you talk about, you know, size and profile differences. So here is an eighth ounce size, quarter ounce weight. Here is quarter ounce in quarter ounce. So you can see the difference in profile there is extreme. Now talking through it, as it pertains to fishing is, you've all been there where you've wanted a heavier lure with less of a profile, less flash, or just less mass, if you will. So like Mille Lacs, you're fishing 30 feet of water and you want a little teeny bait or you know an inch long spoon that still has all the properties of a quarter ounce to get down there, to be able to feel, feel bites, to be able to feel if your minnow head is there or not. And those are the advantages that tungsten is gonna give you on top of you know, we all know that the early season for walleye and any body of water is usually the best. And as you go through the season, you start lightening up your lures and going to smaller and smaller profiles. So with the new tungsten spoon like that, you can start out with those smaller profiles and you're not sacrificing weight, which in my line of work is huge. If I can use a quarter ounce weighted spoon, in an eighth ounce profile has never been done before. It's gonna catch you more fish. It's gonna allow you to be far more stealthier. And the cool part is it'll pound through slush in a hole and it'll also get down to the bottom instantly. All right, now as promised, we're gonna get into some fish catching action. Here's Brad's first walleye of the day. What do we got going on here, Brad? Just another little chunky fish. Once we got, you know, once I got that size profile dialed in, we really started putting more up here. I mean, so clear bodies of water, I always like using a smaller profile if you can get away with it. And the new Slim Spoon from Northland allows me to do that. I can get that, that smaller profile I want with all the weight, with all the weight, all the weight that's necessary to get it down. See, there's that Slim Spoon and I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. It's a little cold, so we can get that out of there. But the, right there, that slim profile design slides right through the hole real nice. You can see I have the nice natural colors there, which these guys love. And all it does is simply allow that bait to get down there just like a panfish jig. It gets down there really quick. If you think of it just like the buck shots, okay, the buck shots are really loud. Spoon fish is really, really heavy. The Slim Spoon fishes just like the Buckshot without the rattles. So if you're looking for that size profile without the rattles, the Slim Spoon is the one that's gonna do it for you from Lake of the Woods, Mille Lacs, anywhere you go with walleyes, they're gonna eat the Tungsten Slim Spoon. Now the tough part about being the camera guy for Brad running around with the DSLR is sometimes he'll catch a fish and then I'll turn around, I'm gonna go back to start fishing myself and a second later, he'll catch another fish. So I gotta run back from my hole over to Brad again. So uh, this next clip is that exact thing happening. A little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. I should have just stayed over here, Brad. You, you should have. That was back to back. <laughs> it, no sooner that I get it down, it just thumped it. Um, I, so the difference between like buckshot and the slim spoon is sometimes I don't want rattles. I know we beat up rattles a lot because they work, but other times, yep, 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 that is Ooh. that is a nice one. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Sometimes rattles actually spook the fish away. Not all the time, but when I'm looking on clear bodies of water, I don't want that really loud bait sometimes. Sometimes I want that smaller profile, really good hooks, and a little bit of flash to sink the deal on these walleyes. A lot of times you'll be jigging a rattle bait and you'll activate those rattles and you see the fish spook away and that's what's been happening today a little bit. So the key has been no rattles, a little bit of flash and sharp hooks. And that's what has been doing the deal today. So that's why you have 
the addition to tungsten to everything else you have in your box because sometimes you just need to be a little bit more stealthy to catch these walleyes. All right, now that we got a few fish catches under our belt in this video here, Brad is gonna get into some hardcore information. He's gonna talk a little bit about how you can locate walleyes throughout the ice season, specifically on Mille Lacs Lake, and the types of things that he's looking for and thinking about. So on Mille Lacs, as far as fish moving goes, a lot of times early, everything bases around fall feeding bag and spring spawn. So what you'll see is full circle. When you hear a lot of the guides talk about the bite came full circle or things of that nature, and what that means is in the spring, a lot of the fish are shallow because they came in to spawn. In the fall, a lot of the fish are shallow because they came in to eat. Now, that's about half the truth. A lot of the walleyes on Mille Lacs and other clear bodies of water come in in the fall because the tulibies came in to spawn and those game fish are right behind them. So what we do is, typically early ice, you're on that first break on Mille Lacs because that's where the tulibies got done spawning and that's where the walleyes are. They're right there eating up the little ones right behind them and they're just putting on the feed bag and that's why early ice bite is so hot. And then as the season progresses, those two will be slipped back out to the basin and then come all the way back in. So early season Mille Lacs, I'm usually fishing shallow, first break rock, first break sand, first break mud, that type of thing. And then later in the season, we just kind of regress back and forth due to either the spawning movement or the bait movement. Next up, Brad is going to show off his go-to spoon fishing rod when he's using these new spoons. And he's also going to break down just some of the characteristics that he likes to look for when he's looking for a tool for that job. Number one favorite rod for spoon fishing is Precision Power by Tuned Up. And number one reason why, it's super fast action. Now, that couples perfectly with tungsten spoons because that spoon hits so hard on that tip where it's like thunk, thunk, thunk. You could even use a cheap rod and have really, really good, you know, sensitivity because that spoon, believe it or not, this is a 3 8 ounce spoon that's about the size of an eighth ounce spoon. So that kind of gives you your, your, your metric point on how big a spoon can be versus the rod. But when you're fishing spoons, always fast action rods. I've, I, I have a lot of customers show up every year and they have wimpy, like, moderate action rods you don't want that for spoon fishing you want as fast or extra fast as possible in your ice rods so if you're looking for a dynamite combo it's going to be the slim spoon by northland and the precision powered by tuned up is a match made in heaven for all your jig and walleye needs now obviously we're talking a lot about spoons in this video but there's another important key that i always preach brad always preaches and that is making sure you got dead sticks, set lines out there to help increase your uh, catch rate throughout the day. So just cause you're on a spoon bite doesn't mean that you should forget about your set lines. Like the one number one things we do on all the guide trips is once we get a few fish on spoons, we start putting our set lines out and nine times out of 10, you're gonna catch just as many or more on your set lines throughout the day than you are in your jigging spoons. But you'll notice if you switch all the way over to jigging spoons the whole time, you're gonna catch less fish because most of the time, 60% of the time fish bite all the time. No. But what happens is your jigging spoons are those active lures bringing fish in and cycling through your whole spread. So just keep that in mind. A good ratio for set lines versus jig lines is about 50-50 or 60-40 either way to help putting more fish up on top of the ice. Well, that's about all we got for you in this video. Special thanks to Brad for sharing a bunch of really good information. And if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below because we have a lot more awesome content coming in the future. And until then, we will see you in the next one.